So this is how we actually calculate what that coverage rate, what that debt service coverage ratio is. So in our example number one here, um, if you got a property and the gross rents on the property are five thousand dollars, and your monthly mortgage payment is four thousand dollars per month, your debt service coverage ratio is going to be one point two five. So you're basically going to divide the rent by the debt, and it's going to get you what your what your ratio is. Does that make sense? And it's always by gross rents. It's always by gross rents. Um, a question I would have if I were doing this, right, which I do. So I did have this question. So I asked myself um, <laughs> is how were the rents established? Hey. So that's a good question. The answer to that is no. It's a good question, but no. So you're always either going to go with what the property is leased out for, depending on the investor, or we're going to order something called a 1007, which is an appraisal form where the appraiser goes out and they they do the research. So basically they're gonna do the same thing you do as an agent. They're gonna get on Rentler and the MLS and they're gonna figure out what the what like rents are for you know the surrounding area and the you know bedroom and bath count and all the cool things that go into the property. Kevin, you look confused and I wanna make sure that I'm not missing something. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good thing this is being recorded and th this is this is broadcast live, everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh yes, they could add that into the rent if it's if it's standard for it. It's something that um we'd want to get with the appraiser. Right. And let and they're gonna want to know that you've got all of your utilities built in to your price. Um what happens if you get the next scenario where you've still got your four thousand dollar a month payment, but our rent is thirty five hundred dollars, right? So it drops our our DSCR rate to 0.88. That's a problem, right? Because we're negative cash flowing on a property. On these types of loans, um, ha. <laughs> in these types of loans, we're either gonna, we need to get that back up closer to one. Um, but these aren't, these aren't like your typical Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans where we run it through an automated underwriting system and it spits stuff out. These are more make sense underwriting types of loans. So we can offset the, the factor um, by you know, matching things together, like a larger down payment will decrease the risk, right? It'll also increase the ratio. Doing a low, buying down the interest rate lower will also reduce things. Um, so there's there's ways to improve that that debt service coverage ratio ratio does that make sense so it's not something where it's just a no 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 if we can make it make sense to the underwriter and they feel like they can offset their risk then we can move forward with the loan um so questions on any of this um another thing that's cool too is we have some investors too that if we don't have like a 20% down payment or 25% down payment to get the to get the interest rate down, we have lenders that will allow you to cross collateralize another property. Do we all know what cross collateralization is? So cross collateralization is 
the lender will take and they'll put a note on a different property that has equity in it and count that as down payment funds toward your purchase of your investment property. So um, we have, we have investors. Oh yeah. Nope. They'll do it with a personal home as long as they have that, as long as you have the equity in it. Right. And to do that, they're going to require a, a full blown appraisal on the home that you want to use. Yeah. Land I'm not sure about. So I can find out though. That's a that's a good question. Dang it, Erica, stop with those questions. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was a, that's a dang good question. Um, I'll, I'll find out the answer to that. Um, but I, I thought that that was a really cool thing because this is the only loan product that I have access to that will allow a cross collateralization. So I thought that was I thought that was pretty pretty neat. Um. What are some of the objections you think you would get from a client on, on a loan like this? You don't necessarily have to use the existing rents. You can, if you think that the existing rents aren't gonna work, you can um, order that 1007 appraisal on the property. The cost of the 1007. The cost of the 1007 is about it's about 150 bucks on top of on top of the regular appraisal, right? Um so mm -hmm, it is, right? So if if it were my client and they were they were worried about it, I would I would so an appraisal is going to cost you you're going to be seven hundred dollars is your investment cost to find out what the appraiser thinks the rents are in the neighborhood, right? Um, so you do ahead of time, right? Where our expertise comes in, we can say, hey, this is really low. <laughs> They are, but I mean, part of part of our job, not job, is part of our expertise. I like that. Um, as as a as a realtor, is you're not going to set want to set your client up for failure. You're going to want to do the due diligence on the property before you make an offer an offer on it, right? So, Cameron, how would you typically do that? They talked about looking. Are, are you talking about one to rent or one to buy? So, uh, if you, you know, if it was for an investor, I go to yeah. Obviously, check value with comparables, and then I go what they're talking about today with Hill and Rentler and all the other places that we have that investors will also use to see what rent should be. I think Air DNA will do that too, right? Or will will that only do short term? I was just kicking that. Oh, let's see if that is a great tip. Let's circle back on that. <laughs> if it's not, can we agree to blame Todd? <laughs> He's regretting he showed up. Um, but I think I think that's right. You want to do the due diligence first before you put an offer in. Yes. So that that's what she was asking is will they use projected rents? Um and they they won't. Um but you could I don't know why you would, but you could come back later and you could refinance it into cash flow loan. Depends on what your strategy is, right? If you figure that you're cash flowing on the property, which is what this is going to require, then they're they're probably they're probably not a bad solution, especially if your client um, 
either isn't cash flowing on other properties in their portfolio or they're self-employed and their accountant is better than their mortgage mortgage guy or gal is mortgage individual is um right so sometimes a matter of fact this is what i would use this for the most is somebody that like um we just did one for it was it was huge it was a million dollar one right but the the buyer their taxes were shot they were shot because they didn't want to they didn't want to pay taxes right so they took every deduction that they could find and then probably then some more um so their accountant did such a good job that it made it so they wouldn't qualify for the opportunity of buying the home so plugging this in and they actually got a really good deal because their um their ratio came back at a 1.5 um which was i thought was pretty pretty dang impressive um but if if not for the DSCR loan, they don't they don't get into the home, right? Or they have to wait until their next tax filing to file their to file their taxes differently so that they could qualify, which the property might not be there in that case. Like it. Mm hmm. to use this. Um, so typically, if you were going to, if you were leaving your primary residence to buy another primary residence, you would just write a lease on your current home. Um, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought about like refinancing into a DSCR loan. Probably that would drive your interest rate and your payment up. So it'd be counterproductive when you could just, go out and rent the property for full market value and not and hopefully your interest rate is lower so you're you're cash flowing more does that make sense did i just confuse the heck out of you well, i understand it. i was thinking more so um, they want to take a house for a resident mm-hmm I think, what's that? Oh, to, so turn their, so actually take a loan back out on, on this primary and use like funds for down payment to go do that. Um, I think you could do that. I think that would be a very costly way to do that. Um, I think I'd look at a few other alternatives before doing that, like maybe a HELOC or something that was a little bit more interest rate friendly um, or even doing just pr planning a little bit and doing a full on refinance of your house and taking taking the, the cash out on a primary. Right. And then using those funds that way. So could you do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you could. Um, I just don't know if that would be the most advantageous use of the loan. Matter of fact, it never even crossed my mind, which isn't, dang it, these classes are so good. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think on that one. Angie, have you done a DSCR loan? Yeah. Condo, which are like four classes. So 
you're starting to get a limit that was like, oh, we got to, what if we refine it to eight for an extra amount of cost there to do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because. Oh, yeah. No, you shouldn't. You let me know. I, not, I promised her we could do this in five minutes. And. So fun is actually to do uh, the mastermind around this kind of stuff and to like talk about what other people have done and like um, how they've done it and what their properties look like. And then everybody's kind of pulled credit from their pulled equity in different places. And we all have different investments in different spots. And we all got there to different types of loans. And I think. That mastermind would be really fun. Hey, everybody expect an email invitation from Angie. You don't have enough going on right now, so. Oh, but she went from telling her story. I don't know if you guys saw it. She went from like, I'm here and here and here, and then she started talking about investing, and she got tweezy. And it was the coolest moment. You could tell it lights her so on fire when she works through deals and stuff like that. Like, that's so fun. We got to find our other people who will twinkle at the same thing. fire. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> some, some key takeaways, at least from my perspective. Um, so, DSCR loans can be a really good tool to help our investor partners scale their their businesses um they they can run really quickly um not a lot of required documentation fairly fairly simple if they're getting into the right home right um there's there's a bunch of different options for these um and and lastly if you can get the hang of this having having just the conversation of giving clients options on how to do things sometimes it's a huge win because they might look at this and go eh i'm in a good place i'd rather i'd rather just do a, a full qualifying loan and maybe get a lower interest rate but you're you're presenting them things to think about and options to work through which makes you a more valuable partner in my mind yes So, yes. So the the funds can be gifted, or they can come from um, a secured loan. So if you secured it up against, um, yeah, a HELOC. So up against a property, a car, right? Um, it just can't be unsecured. Like you couldn't take it from like your Chase card or something like that, or you couldn't use Cammons Amex Black. To do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions that I can vaguely answer for you? Yeah. Um, two to three weeks. Yeah. So they they go in the the standard, the standard turn times, especially if you. It's all about how you package them up and send them to you, send them to the lender, but they they can go pretty fast. Cam? Uh, no, Mr. Brock, but I'm curious if that interest only one where you can go interest only for the first ten years would be good for maybe more, I don't know, less seasoned investors where they can keep more of the money and pay what they want or can't towards principal, but allow them to actually have some cash flow. Is the rate on that higher? And do you see that offer with the interest only investment? I thought that was interesting. I haven't seen that. So I don't do a whole bunch of interest only things, mainly because they don't run across. Um, but I think if it helps an investor ease into a property, as long as they know the full ramifications of them not paying a full, you know, full principal and interest payment, right? So their balance is staying the same. I, I think that that could be really cool because they might be able to use that cash flow to do other things like improvements to the property or even saving more to acquire a different property. Yeah. The cash flow, say 200 bucks a month or something, you could put the rest towards principal. You know, they have to, is it the same interest rate as the other? It's not. It's not. It's about three-eighths of a percent higher. 
three eighths of a percent higher, so point three seven five percent. I know, I know. I've tried to get them all to stop, but they won't. <laughs> yes. No, it's it's still it's still the same. So you can choose the length of the prepayment penalty, and then it's typically six months worth of interest is what it is. Um, also, uh, another fun fact about these, um, there are certain, you can, they're non-qualified mortgages. So we as a lender could write this for you in most states. So um, if you found one in Georgia, for example, that, that, you had an investor that wanted to get into you. Um, that's something that we can help you out with because, because it's a non-qualified mortgage. They don't require, they're crazy. They don't require you to be licensed to write these types of loans. This Shh. <laughs> you, know, you know who's doing a bunch in Georgia, if, if you're interested in that, is um, Clay and Cody. I have, are doing some deals there and they, they seem like they're pretty, pretty dang cool. So yeah, good, good, good place to be. Cause I don't think they're, I'll tell you where you don't want to be right now. Oh, this is recording. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you after. Um, I can't Shoni said, I can't turn it off after where the rest of the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Florida, I just, yeah, Florida, I just got a whole list of counties and it seemed like every county in the state where the the natural disasters right now are just wrecking shop and they're, they're, oh good, oh good. Um, any other questions on this? Okay, um, well, here's my information. Um, Jake, Jake Butler in the back there. He's my he's my partner. He and I we we both office upstairs. Um, so you you're always free to come by and ask us any questions or chit chat with us or call, email, text, smoke signal, whatever, whatever you need. We'll we'll be there for you guys. Yay.